Next thing I want to talk about is the power system. What a mess, right? We've got all these electronics. What do we do with them? Well, it's really not that confusing. First of all, let's start with just one component. This is a brushless motor. You're going to need a propeller and something to hold the propeller on. Uh, there are prop savers that use an O-ring to hold the prop propeller on, but that can flap around and uh, reduce the performance. It's usually better to use some kind of prop adapter, nose cone, uh, something to hold the prop propeller on there. Brushless motors, these are just cheap ones. Uh, you can use anything you want. Uh, remember just to keep the thrust uh, about 50% 50, uh, 50 greater than what you need. So, well, I'm sorry, about double. So if you need to lift uh, 10 pounds, make sure you've got about 20 pounds. And that's the brushless motor and propeller combination. Now you'll notice that on the ends of these uh, wires, there's three wires from a brushless motor, uh, I've got these connectors. These are called bullet connectors. They're all different sizes. You want to make sure that you get the right size for what current you're going to use. Uh, this system, uh, we're rating each, each motor in ESC combination is about 25 amps. So I've got yeah, you're pretty standard bullet connectors that can handle that much current. There's different brands. Uh, I wouldn't say any one is better than the other. How you solder these on, I'm going to show you that in just a minute, uh, actually in the next video. But we've got our connectors on here, and that makes it really easy when you build the quad and you first turn on the motors, you're going to notice some of them are going in the wrong direction, or maybe you're really lucky and they'll all be going just the right way, but that never happens for me. So the way that you fix that is you can just detach two of these and switch them. And I'll show you that when we do the funnel setup. So the power system is the motor, and then we have to have an electronic speed controller. Now it's got a bunch of wires. It's got three mating wires, and you notice these have the female uh, bullet connectors. I'm going to show you why that's important in a second. Uh, these are just standard, you know, these are Turnigy plus 25 amp. ESCs, electronic speed controls. There's lots of different ones on the market. You want to make sure you can get one or that, that you get one that can handle greater than 50 hertz uh, pulse width modulation in. This is where the pulse width modulation comes into the controller. You can see I added a little bit of an extension on here. This is a typical servo connector, three pin, signal, power, ground. That's going to connect to the Hoverfly Pro board. And then you've got your power connection. And this is a very standard connection. Uh, it's called a Dean's connector, and you'll notice uh, I've got positive here on my flat vertical connector, and then I've got negative on the uh, horizontal connector. It's actually marked, if you look closely on some of these, you can see plus and minus. Uh, I just always remember because uh, the positive is on the, almost makes like a plus sign. It's like the vertical part of a plus sign. I don't know. Uh, it's just the way I remember it. Uh, you'll notice I, I've got heat shrink, different kinds of heat shrink on here. Heat shrink is really important. Don't use electrical tape. If you have electrical tape, throw it away. You should get yourself some heat shrink and use heat shrink from now on. Uh, electrical tape has a habit of coming off when you least want it to. Uh, so heat shrink is cheap. Go ahead and pick some up. So that's the other part of the uh, power system. And then finally we've got a wire harness, which really just provides power from the battery to each one of the four speed controllers. And this is a standard, my, my standard power harness. Um, I've got lots of heat shrink here. I don't like to use connectors for the pluses and the minuses. I like to solder them all together, and that's difficult, and I'll show you a trick. Uh, this is all, uh, I don't know if you can see that 10-gauge wire. You need to make sure that you use the correct gauge for what current you're using, and you can look that up on the internet. 10 gauge is probably a lot heavier than I need, but I've got really short runs here. I'm not using a I'm not, I'm not adding a lot of extra weight to my uh, aircraft by by using 10 gauge, uh, so I use it. Plus, it's available at the hobby store fairly regularly. And you notice I've got different Dean's connectors on here. I've got female connectors and I've got male connectors. I'm going to show you uh, why that's important in just a second. Uh, also, attached to your wire harness, you're going to need power. That's what this is for, power for the Hoverfly Pro. It's going to come directly from your battery to the Hoverfly Pro uh, as long as you have uh, like a 3S battery where the voltage doesn't exceed the rating of 16 volts on the Hoverfly Pro. If, uh, if you've got like a 5S battery, then you're going to need to use uh, 
maybe a separate battery or an external regulator that can regulate down to what the Hoverfly Pro needs. Uh, then you'll notice this one other wire on here. I wire this directly into the harness and this is a voltage alarm. This is specifically for a 3S battery and uh, there's an LED on here. It's blue when you're good, blinks blue and then the when it gets lower and the buzzer goes off when you get too low. Why wonder about when your battery is out? Just go ahead and grab one of these for a couple of dollars and put it into your wire harness. Um, that'll save a lot of batteries. You damage lipos if you draw them down too low. Now back to the idea of, of these connectors and which female or male, which ones do I have to use. Uh, let's start at the battery. Here's the battery. right? We've got a balancing plug and then we've got the Dean's connector which we put on there. Uh, this is a little bit of an old battery so it's we got some electrical tape on it, sorry for that. Um, but this is a Dean's connector and when do you notice it's a female connector, right? Female connector, why? Think of the outlets in your home, right? We, if prongs were sticking out of the wall with 120 volts, uh, it wouldn't be real safe. You want to make female on the hot side. So battery, female. Now, this is my wiring harness. In order to go into that female connector, I'm going to need and you're going to hear a beep because that's my LiPo alarm. So I've got female on my battery, male for my wire harness, that plugs in. Now on the other side, the other side of this wire harness is hot. So I've got female there. So that's why I have a male on the speed controller. So that plugs in here. right? Now the other end of the speed controller is hot. I've got female again. Female meets with the male on the brushless speed controller. I'm sorry, male on the uh, brushless motor. So I've got my motor, speed controller, wire harness, and then this all goes to the battery. So those are your basic uh, components of the, of the wire harness power system and we're going to mount that on the uh, on the frame in a, in a moment here. Um, the next video is going to be on how to, how to solder some of these components together.